Working with P5.js and images requires us to do something a little bit differently. For this, when we look on the P5.js documents, we will see that under the processing transition item in their tutorials, we have information about using images. So inside the image example, we will see that it's very similar to what we did inside of processing, except that we do need to make sure that our path is correct. In processing, we didn't have to specify if our assets were in a data folder, assets folder, images folder. We just listed the name. If it was in the same project folder, it could find it. But in P5.js, we will have to make sure our path names are correct to find the asset. So if you have an assets folder, you can put it there. If your assets are just in the main project directory, then you do not need to worry about the path name. And the path name inside of your script is just going to say load image and the name of the image file. If I had an assets or an images folder or the data folder, I would need to make sure that I update the path name at this point. Looking at the sample, we will see that we create an image element. We use a var image, and then we use the image command and specify what image and where we want to draw it. There's one final gotcha, and this can sometimes trip people up. That's that we have to use a local server to get this up and running. So you could use MAMP. And with MAMP we could set up in preferences where is our starting folder. So I could navigate to that document root and set that root. And then I could run it out of MAMP. And that would certainly work. I navigate to my project folder. I can choose my project that I'm working with and I can say that is going to be the root folder. And then I can click OK. Click Start Server. Servers have started. And click to open the web page and if I get rid of that extra information localhost port 880 we'll see there is the project running it loaded the unicorn image in the background that would be one way to go about doing it so if you go and download MAMP you could set that up but we're going to look at an alternative method that I think is ultimately a little bit nicer than using MAMP. What we are going to use is HTTP server which is part of Node. So if we go to the Node Package Manager JS or NPM JS web page, we are using HTTP server. Now the command to install that is npm install dash g http server. If you are on an Apple computer, you do need to type in sudo, s-u-d-o, npm install http server, and that will install it. And we do that when we're inside terminal. But if we don't want to use terminal, as a separate app, one thing that's nice inside of Atom is we can install Term 3. Now Term 3 is an add-on that we can install. So if we go to our Atom Preferences and go to Packages, at that point if we type in Term 3, We will be able to see that I have currently installed it. Now, if we want, if you haven't installed it previously, 
then we can see that here are the packages. Adam is showing us featured packages. And we just type in term three. Okay, let it search. And we can see that 47,000 people have installed it. Terminal Plus might be a good one as well because it has 300,000 installs. But Term 3 works really nice for what we need, and that's what I currently have, so that's what I will demo with. You're welcome to use any other ones as you see fit. Now the way that Term 3 works, so if I'm looking at my script file here, so I'm in this project folder inside of Atom. Once Term 3 is installed, I can look here and see that I could open a terminal window in a new pane. So this key command here is Control Alt Right Arrow and it will open it in the right pane. So Control Alt Right Arrow and now Terminal is open and it's navigated to the project folder. So I didn't have to open up Terminal and then work on using CD dot dot slash dot dot slash cd mobile find the name cd p5 slash cow game so I could navigate terminal this way and that's time consuming but if I use term 3 Inside of Atom, it opens up an instance of Terminal, and it starts it out in my project folder, which is super awesome. So once it's installed here, then it's sudo npm install http server dash g. The g is global, so it will install it so it's accessible from any directory on your computer. So every project you work on, you'll be able to create this instance of HTTP server. And it makes it really sweet. So I have it installed, so I'm not going to run the install command again. But once it is installed, to fire up the server and get it running, and this is where it's really exciting, all I have to type in to start the server is HTTP-server. Now, I'm going to make one recommendation, is the server will cache the file that you load for a couple minutes. So if you load it, it's not working quite right, you want to reload it, it doesn't show the changes in the server and you can get really frustrated. So the workaround for that is, if we look at the documentation for HTTP server, you'll see there's a number of options we can put in here. And the cache time is going to be what we want to modify. And if we set it to negative one, that means it won't cache our page every time it loads it so that we are able to see the changes happen every time we update our code and refresh the page in the browser. So going back here, dash C dash one, so HTTP server dash C dash one, I'm in the project folder. Now it says it started the server and it tells me the address 127.0.0.1 port 8080. So if I go to my browser and type in my address, we can see there it is and it has been loaded. If I very quickly go through and decide that I will modify my background and I will change the background color. So a little bit of red. A little bit of green. A little bit of blue. A little bit of alpha so we get that trails effect. Refresh and we can see now the background has updated itself. So we get that quick and easy update. Another thing that's really nice about using HTTP server is that if I pull up my dev controls inside of Chrome, it doesn't turn off the server. So unlike working in, say, brackets, 
where if you pull up your dev tools to start debugging your code it breaks the live connection here the server is still running and I can see my dev tools so I can look at my HTML I can look at the console see if there's any error messages or if something is logging out so this is decidedly a better option to work with MAMP is a totally doable option if you want to use MAMP but instead of firing up an entire separate program as long as we're already working inside of Atom it makes sense to use HTTP server to fire it up now the command for stopping the server is inside of terminal it's control C and that will stop the server so control C will stop the server from running so that now the updates or anything are not going to do it and now if I re refresh the page it says the server is not working the connection was refused so that tells me yep it is done looking back at my JS code I loaded my image I used the image command to display that image gave it a location to display fired up my server that I installed and if I wanted to I could do it directly in terminal but it's kind of nicer to do it inside of Atom using term 3 and that opens up that new instance of terminal so I never have to I don't have to keep jumping between applications so that to me would make that the preferred option to work with good luck and have fun